Tuesday, crafty friends. I almost said happy Monday. You know, whenever you have a holiday on Monday, it throws me off. So, Labor Day weekend, we made a quick trip to the beach. And usually when we go to the beach, we go to Gulf Shores, we go to Destin, you know, we go to Orange Beach. Um... The, the Florida or Alabama is where we usually go. But, you know, because it's a drive and because we only had three days uh, and the kids were in school on Friday and we couldn't leave till after they got out of school, we decided to try Gulfport. So we stayed in this, I think, you know, I think they're called Airbnbs. Actually, it was a, you know, it was a house. It was a house built like in the 20s and you know refurbished to be an airbnb and you could see the beach it was the beach was like across the road in front of the house so i posted a picture sitting on there was a day bed sitting in front of the window where you could just sit there and look at the beach and and it was amazing and um anyway we had so much so much so much fun and y'all know i'm a treasure hunter and and if I could be a mudlarker, I would be a mudlarker, you know. And if for those of you who don't know what a mudlarker is, in the UK, they um, look at the, they go along the shore, they find old stuff, pieces of broken stuff, you know. And it's treasures. It's treasures. If it's treasures to them. It would be treasures to me. So. We're looking for shells and, you know, walking up and down the beach. And and the beach was so shallow for so long out. And, and the waves weren't anything, really. And so the kids just got to play and, you know, have fun. And they had boogie boards and they floated around and drug each other around. And they hunted for hermit crabs. Lily caught... 65 I think hermit crab she had this bucket it was just like you know and she let them go but um you know that was pretty fun and then at night they went crab hunting you know the little white ones that run crazy on the beach and um just it was it was just a perfect vacation I'd say so anyway while I was scrounging around the beach looking for shells I saw this, let's see if I can get it back on here. Yeah, it went like this. Okay, so I was walking along and I saw like the corner of this sticking up and I thought, what is that? So I dug my foot around, you know, and I was like, because whenever I go anywhere like that, you know, I like to see, like you can see some trees where, you know, hurricanes had come in and you know, some houses are missing from years gone by, not anything recently. But anyway, and then the bricks on the houses, how they're, they were custom made and, and they all have like something specific on them. Anyway, all that stuff is very fascinating to me. So, digging around. And so I picked this up and I'm like, it's a brick, a piece of a brick. And, and the stamp that goes in the piece of brick. It has my initials on it. ST. 1891. Now, I don't, I don't know if this was made in 1891. I have no earthly idea. I have no idea how long it's been laying around in the sand and the ocean and everything else. But, you know, talk about a treasure. Uh... I don't know. It it just touched me. It, you know, it just touched me. It was like I was there. It was there. <laughs> I was supposed to find it, you know. And so, I, then I did some investigating. So, I mean, this isn't about crafting. It will be in a minute, but if y'all don't like this kind of stuff, fast forward. But I found it fascinating. So, you know, you can find anything on YouTube. So, a lot of um, bricks are made like this and they so they have a a a brick rectangle in the top and the bottom 
are empty. And so they they throw the clay like, you know, brick making stuff. This was how they did it. I guess they still can do it that way, but this is made by hand bricks. And so they fill that mold up with the clay and then they take this part and and slap it down on top of it and pound it a few times pull it out pull the mold off and the brick dries and it's got the mold in it and then they use it over and over and over again and why this one um and this brick looks like it was intentionally supposed to be a half a half brick because it's so smooth right there. I doubt that it broke like that. But anyway, you know, all the things. And because this goes down on the side like that. That's another reason I think that it was intended to be a half a brick. But that is fascinating to me. Y'all know I love old stuff. Imagine if this really was an 1891 brick. I mean, that's enough for me. <laughs> so, that is my treasure. That is my, my woohoo, sands all over everything treasure. All right, let me try to get that off. So, before I left, or actually, I think I showed it on Sunday, but I, I stamped a bunch of my Halloween images, um to take with me, you know, in downtime, because, you know, everybody's got to bathe, and everybody's got to get it ready at some point, and, you know, there's always downtime, and, you know, as you've heard me say lots and lots of times, I don't do nothing well, so I took with me some stamped images, I took a water brush and some watercolors, and I also took some regular brushes in case I didn't, my water brush wasn't the right size. And then I took this little box. It still has a treat in it, as you can see. Because when we were at the retreat, we discovered about stitching on cards. And so you see, I, I, I put several in here, although I only got one done, and I got it done in the car. But anyway, it has my goodies. This box is the perfect size to put tape, my needle, scissors, candy. <laughs> you know, the important things in life. So, that was a very small... So, I ended up... This is, this, these were the crafting things I took. This and this. Okay? Because I don't do nothing well. Okay. So, let me move that over here. So, this is the card that I made. And these are so easy, y'all. I'll do a video later in the week. I mean, if you've ever sewn anything, you know, it's a breeze. But if you haven't ever, I'll do a video and show you how to do a few of them. And, and it, you know, you decide what color background you want to use. You decide what color thread you want to use and where it's going to go. If it's variegated or not. If it's metallic or not. And then, when you have it done, whatever you put behind it that shows through the holes that are left is, like, transformative. So, I tried this with orange under it. I tried it with a few shades of purple under it. I even tried it with a gold under it. That just, it was it was not the factor that this is. I tried it with, um, and I also noticed that very sparkly glitter paper, like I tried foils under there, uh, mirrored cardstock, I mean, and it just wasn't, it just wasn't the bling. Now, I may put some diamond dots here and there. I may not. I think this one is pretty fantastic. And I also could have continued stitching, you know. But I wanted a lot of the stuff to show through the the holes. So, I hope you're... I'm, I'm just sitting here looking at it mesmerized. There you go. You can really see. Fantastic. I love that. Okay, so there's that. So then, here is one of the images that um, I stamped on pattern paper. And then I did at glossy accent after this morning, actually, after I got my, my vacuuming done. Um, but 
I would prefer to use Prismacolor pencils on this kind of paper, but you know, I can't take five pencils. So I was trying so I used watercolor and, and I think it I think it I think it turned out really well. So that's gonna be fun to do something with. And then the girl, you know, I did her. So with her, so I took a, a small palette of um, Prima Tropicals is the name of the colors. And then I took that small pack of the metallic watercolors that I made myself. And so down here where the roses are, I painted over the roses with that. Oh, and I think she's amazing. And I also went over the candlesticks and that got kind of, I kind of got out of the lines there, but I think it's okay. Um, you know, you never know. And I, and I highlighted the tops of their heads with metallic. You never know what kind of lighting you're going to have. And I mostly just, you know, piled up on my bed and did it. Like I said, when I was waiting for somebody to be ready or whatever. And, uh, so there's that one. And then this one. Now this is one of the stamps that Tina. Hey Tina. Crafty Bean sent me. And I think she is hysterical. I had so much fun coloring her. <laughs> Look at her with her babies and their eyeballs falling out. Ah, she's going to be fun to make a background for. So there's her. And then the other stamp set that had the crazy pumpkins. And I showed y'all how I put them all together. So I've got them colored up. And then in between them, I just put some... It kind of looks like they have a uh, hair there, but you know, my intention was sort of like a, uh, you know, scrunchy paper or, you know, it just looked like it needed a little something, something there. So anyway, I absolutely love these. They're so vintage looking to me. And I mean, and I, I did use a, um, a glitter gel pen this morning in a few places because you know, I, a lot of vintage stuff that had glitter on it. So, you know, I had to do that. So those are the things that I did on my trip. And I got a, um, I got the new Distress Mica stains while I was gone. And I got some dyes from Timu. So there's going to be lots of fun video and happening this week. Let me just say, that's why I was up at 530 this morning washing, vacuuming, <laughs> doing all the things, trying to get everything done so that by the time I got the kids to school, I had it done. I didn't. I had to do some more after I got back, but that's okay because now it's done and now I can play. So I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I enjoyed sharing with you. Amazing. Be still my heart. Okay. Love you guys. Blessings.